Hey, this is Ricky from Yearling Studio, and in this one, we're going to talk about the Riley Cure Tabletop Dryer Conveyor thing. All right. Whoop. All right. Uh, before we talk about that, we got to run something through it, so uh, we're going to continue printing the frogs from the black ink video that was really turned into nothing about pitch black ink but uh my recommendation there uh you know this because these are uh what would you call these videos these are uh um, um, serialized you know this is a story you're gonna follow um it's a good ink i recommend it. it's nice it's a nice ink all right let's keep going we're gonna print another frog uh on a tie-dyed uh, shirt. Man, the last one felt like it was too low, right? Let's take a look at it. These are the problems. This is like I get nothing done when I'm screen printing because I'm like, was that last one too low or too high? I don't know. These shirts don't matter because they're for my buddy. Um, it felt too low. I pulled it too far. You know what I mean? Like I said, three, four, I said before, like, the shape of the top kind of matters. Like, if this was, like, a big squared off design, I'd probably be okay with this. But because the actual top of this piece, uh, visually weighted, actually feels more like it's at this edge than at the actual eyeballs, I think I want my design to come up. I know zero about whatever I'm talking about or how to talk uh, about things like I'm talking about, but we're talking about it. You know what I mean? Anyways. <clears throat> Short story long, I'm gonna leave this on the plant the way it is. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna reflood it real quick. Pull it once, twice, and we'll just leave it. We'll just let it run down the screen. Who cares? Wow, dope. All right, this is the point in the video where I would usually be like, no, we take our Riley flash dryer and we take it over the top and blah, 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 blah. It's only one color. We don't really need to have this step. I have zero idea why I even turned this thing on. Uh, today we're looking at the tabletop curing unit. So I'm just gonna take these off. And the creepy door behind you is gonna open. We're gonna turn this whole rodeo. How does this stand work? You guys ready for this? Y'all ready for this? All right, we're gonna look at this guy. That was neat, I pulled on the power cord and it tipped it right to where I needed it to go. Well, you guys are Hmm. All right, I'm gonna pull this t-shirt off the platen here and we're gonna talk about this tabletop curing unit for a second. Um, it's pretty neat, not, should have planned this a lot better guys. Not as ideal as you would think. Um, I mean, it, it definitely works. And for the price range that I needed it to be at and I would guess a lot of you other startups out there would need it at, this is amazing. Um, I forget the actual specs on the width of this. I'm going to guess 18. It feels like 18. Um, there's a foot and we'll guess about right there is probably another, yeah, another six inches. So 18 inches opening. Um, that's all you get to get a piece of fabric through there though, is 18 inches. Um, we can lift this up, this little gate. Sometimes I don't even need them on there at all. Like if you're running a hoodie, probably just take them right off at this point because it's gonna be so thick. Um, I can show you some techniques here to fold a hoodie to get it on there, but I also need to find a hoodie to, to show you that. I'm about to put the t-shirt on. I'll kind of talk through how I fold it as I put it on there. It's kind of like a muscle memory thing at this point. As you can see, my press is literally here i take the shirt off spin around i try not to move that much while i'm printing the more you walk around the more uh steps you need to take in whatever cycle your printing process is the longer it's going to take and them probably the more tired you're going to be can we fix you guys holy smokes this is rough all right so we're back at it i'm going to put the shirt on there all right, so here's my print again. Um, to get it on there, as I go to put it onto the belt, I actually kind of like fold in the sleeves and this gets the shirt considerably thinner. This is maybe like 16 inches, I would guess. Um, 
yeah, right about there. Uh, and on the belt, and it's gonna start feeding. You, you kinda gotta get it up into the curing unit a little bit uh, for it to actually take up the shirt. Like if you started it way back here, the shirt's actually too heavy and will start slipping on the belt and falling off. So um, just need to move it up a little bit higher and that will get you started. To talk about what this is, is essentially the flash drying unit that I have like over here. We'll try to wheel it over. All right, the Riley, I'm gonna try to pick it up here. The, the name's on the other side, trust me. It's the Riley Flash Cure. You guys know what it is if you're printing, you need it to dry things or whatever it's for. I really don't know what I'm talking about. I just kind of make stuff up as I'm going. Uh, can we get this back onto the piece of cardboard I use over here? That'd be great. Um, would you guys believe I work in education somewhere? Um, this thing's still going through. Breakneck speed. Anyways, what this essentially is, is that thing I just carted over here. The Riley Flash uh, unit. Um, inside this box when you, when you assemble this because you need to assemble this when it when it comes uh, Maybe at some point in the future. I'll buy another one and assemble it. I don't know probably not uh, When you buy this uh, in there is pretty much the same heating element that you see on the flash unit You got yourselves a Sam's Club uh, conveyor belt pizza oven uh, Belt right here. It's just kind of feeding under it. It's cool. It works. Um, you know, before I had this, I did a lot of my curing of my water-based inks, like, on the platen. Like, if it's one color black, you can just kind of just dry it and it works. <laughs> like, the instructions don't say that, but it works. Um, and I don't know if you can see it maybe in the way, way back somewhere. I have a heat press. Um, so that was another way I started before I could afford the Riley Cure tabletop unit. Um, was that had a heat press, um, dry it onto the platen, like I said, and then, uh, put it onto the heat press. I think I had it at like 3:30 for like 40 seconds or something like that with a Teflon sheet on top of it and never had any complaints, never had any washouts. I pretty much keep a copy of every shirt I make and wear it and it's good. So that kind of works. So if you're kind of starting out and you need a solution, and you're seeing all these things about needing like a forced air flash dryer, you probably would benefit from that if you were like a high-end shop, but you're not because you just started. <laughs> we need four years of experience before we'll hire you at this entry-level position. Um, it's kind of like one of those things. So you'll get by with that. It's slow, it's a lot more work, you get a lot more tired, but it does the job and you can save up for something like this, which is now doing a lot of work for me and saving me a lot of time on each cycle for every shirt. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about this. Um, get you in here. It's not very big, which is nice. Uh, you can see I kind of have a Walmart folding table here that I keep it on. Uh, the rubber feet are comfortably from each edge. It's working well. Um, again, my setup here is like my press is there. I just take it off the plat and turn around and put it on there. I find that really ergonomic and easy. And then, then just come off the other side of the table and drop in a box. And when the box is full, I take them out of the box and then I put more on the belt until they go in the box. And I take them out of the box and I put more on the belt until they come out of the box. And then we count all the ones that were in the boxes and then we fold them and put them back in the boxes. And then we panic that we didn't count them right. So we pull them back out of the boxes and count them again. And then we put them back in the boxes and then drop off the boxes to the customer. And we're like, here's all your boxes. Um, and that's screen printing. Um, but yeah, this is it. It's nice. It's portable um, in a sense. Uh, what was a big seller for me, honestly, I'm going to set you down back on this box for a second. What was a big seller for me was the fact that it's actually, uh, this is going to be a simulation. Hold on a second. Cut! Comic effect. All right. Um, <laughs> what powers this thing is essentially a cord that looks exactly like this. This is not the cord to my flash drying unit because it's plugged in and running right now. This is the cord to the uh, electric guitar amp I've had since I was like seven that now I use it to play really bad music 
really loud in my garage. Um, yeah, you know, hashtag can you relate? I don't know. Uh, but it looks just like this, which is awesome because I didn't need to hire an electrician to put in a weird outlet or anything like that. And uh, I can plug it in myself. It's cool. Um, and it runs on like a normal breaker. So I pretty much can run the dryer and some lights and stuff like that on uh, one, one breaker and it, it feels fine. It's not going to explode. I do run my flash dryer on a separate breaker though. Uh, that will flip the breaker when I have the two on. Uh, I did run the heat press and the dryer once at the same time in the same breaker. And I was like, what's that buzzing noise coming from my house? Um, anyways, about this, the portability, you can plug it in. Uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, I've worked in bigger shops that have had bigger units. Um, I can move this around. My setup has changed drastically over the couple years I've been printing. I'm constantly rearranging my shop. Um, I used to be in my basement suffocating to death on the fumes coming from my heat press. It was great. It was a good time. Um, definitely work in a ventilated space. To talk about ventilation, the top of these have, it looks like a four inch duct right there, vents out. I let it vent out right into my garage that I'm working in because I'm a mad lad. Uh, the door is open. I have like a four seasons door right there. It's screened in. So that's nice. Um, if you can move into a house where someone already built a screen for your garage and you just left it there um, do that but you can put some duct work on there uh, I'll show you an example here is you can buy this off Amazon for like I don't know 10 bucks uh, it's some four inch ducting 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 I don't know are they yellow do they quack it looks like a silver dude to me um, covered in black hey is that a poem I don't know. We could put that on there. And I'm probably gonna pay a guy at some point to come put a hole in my wall right there and so I can gas out my neighbors. What do you think? Uh, so that's cool. Definitely a plus. If you're in an open room like this, I feel like you're pretty good. Uh, hoodies are probably the stinkiest thing you can run through this, but t-shirts you're relatively fine. Uh, as again for portability, I don't really want to pick it up right now, but like this whole top actually just comes right off. You can just lift it right up, which is great. It's not that heavy. Again, it's just a bunch of tin holding essentially the flash dryer. <laughs> it's cool looking though, and it's definitely worth it. Um, on the back side, let's take a look. Come with me. Mind the mess. This is this is, this is how professionals work, people. All right, on this side. Uh, we have uh, the control box, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's controlled here uh, by a speed knob. This is the on switch for the actual heating element. And on the back side here, I'm not going to show you, but there's a little switch. And that's to control the actual belt. Um, the reason there's two switches for that, if you are wondering right now, is when you're done with this, it is still very hot, even though you want to be done working. Um, so if you just turned off the belt, and turned off the heater, the heat still in the press or in the dryer would like melt the belt to the the heat shield and that would be bad. Um, I've actually seen that happen on a bigger, more expensive uh, conveyor dryer. It's cool. Um, so you can actually turn that off separately and the belt keeps running. So then, you know, until it cools down and then you come back out the next morning and you're like, what's that noise? And then you're like, oh yeah, I left the thing on. Um, is this relatable for anybody yet? Let's talk about this control panel though, because this is like where the, the video is like, it's been cool and funny so far, but like this is actually was like one of my first complaints. Well, I have some other complaints about assembling it and I'll talk about those at the end and maybe some like actual design flaws in this, maybe, um, but this in general. So, um, as you can see, we got the speed knob and it's really hard to hold this camera, guys. If you can tell, I don't have it turned up to a million. I have it like on like one, three, one point three five. I don't know how to, how you'd say that number. So like one in like three hashes. I guess that's like one point seven five. It goes up to ten people. Let's turn this thing up. The first time, <laughs> the first time I put a t-shirt on this, it threw it through the wall. I just have a, 
a t-shirt shaped hole in the wall in the back of the garage it's crazy um birds fly through it and stuff like that it's sad sometimes um that is not enough time it, it comes out of there in like two seconds it is not enough time to cure anything that was would be like my first complaint about this i actually called uh the people i got this from and they gave they gave me the number to uh the guy that actually assembles the <laughs> this unit i think his name was like dylan or benjamin or something like that he was really nice i'm sorry if you see this in i got your name wrong um he actually and i am not saying to do this whatsoever this is where it's some like little writing would be at the bottom of this i'm not saying to do this um he actually had me like take this panel off and uh there's some circuitry in there that you can adjust to actually adjust the speed because believe it or not it was even faster than that and before i turned it down um it was booking. Like, when I was saying it was throwing stuff, it was throwing stuff. Um, ridiculous. I have it turned down quite a bit, and it's still almost on its lowest setting, and that's about as fast as I'd want to go. It, it, if you run a timer from, you know, the heating element actually starts maybe like three or four inches into here. So it's like a 15-inch uh, by 15-inch heating element, um, I believe, or 16-inch by 16-inch. And on the top of this is probably like 20... I don't know, 22 by 20 or something like that. So you can see there's a little bit of a buffer. There's probably like two or three inches on each edge before you under here, before you're actually under the heat element. So really uh, with the water base, you want that to be under there for like, I don't you know, 30 seconds at minimum. So I have it turned down quite a bit. Um, not too slow because this is this will actually burn shirts. Um, and again, the water base does cure a little bit faster than they say. And if you're doing multiple layers, those previous colors are already going to be flashed and semi-cured from um drying them on on the platen so you you really can cheat it a little bit um it's been working for me trust me anyways so you really need this turned down quite a bit to um to have things travel under it um at the correct time i wish they would adjust this so i actually had larger or bigger control macro control i don't know um over the speed because right now it's like i'm playing with like between the third hash and the fourth hash like that's my speed adjuster and that's like several seconds between those and it's like the tiniest little adjustment still um i'd rather be able to play with bigger numbers to really adjust things because uh you start to struggle a little bit on hoodies again it's closer to the heating melt element i'll try to show you uh what that's like to put one of those onto here um that sucks. And it, I burnt a lot of things before I figured out what the problem was. Um, so, yeah, I wish that was a little bit better. I wish um, maybe... I don't even know. I wish they maybe made it a little bit taller. I think that would help because then you could slow things down a little bit. Um, let's start talking about maybe some things I would do different about this. We've been looking at this shot of my dirty garage for quite a while. People are in shock and all. Uh, I don't know if you can... I really don't want to zoom in. This is embarrassing. It's not going to work. Thank God. <laughs> I was going to zoom in on some stuff. Um, let's talk about the flaws in this. Something that maybe I would fix. I don't, this feels like this was like round one of this. And I've worked at companies where, you know, there's quick roll out on new ideas and we're just going to let the customers test it out. And that's okay. That's what, that's fine. This is what we're here for. To <laughs> test your stuff. Um, all right, so the assembly process on this was fairly good, I would say. I don't have the instruction book anymore. If I remember, though, I remember complaining a little bit about the choice of imagery in the actual instruction book at the time. Um, this was like almost a year and a half, two years ago by the time I bought this. All right, so I've had, I don't know if they've changed it by then. Um, I used to make instruction books, so that's why I'm going to be nitpicky. Um, just that you had some CAD images in there of the press going together, but they use like not helpful angles on a lot of steps that are very particular with small things happening up close. Um, I think they could probably have a little bit more imagery for individual steps, uh, maybe some uh, blowouts of the uh, parts, um, maybe like rotate it a little bit like that. It's just for people who aren't good at Legos, I would have a little bit uh, a more visual instruction there um but that wasn't too bad i mean it's it's relatively easy to put together um 
something let's turn off the, i should have turned this off a minute ago um those other shirts are never getting printed at this point we're, we're 20 minutes into this riley tabletop uh video and i'm just rambling uh feel bad for my loved ones this is what's like being around me all the time so uh like i said we could lift this right up will i die you will see it here it's kind of plugged in i don't want to lift it up but we can lift this whole unit here you can see it's coming off it's we're just going to take you off the stand for a minute oh. all right how this is built here is essentially just a giant um metal box sits on the edge of this kind of like little feet that help it from like sliding mine's really dusty in there um but yeah just kind of sits on there so for the portability if you're actually going to trade shows because i recommend that you can actually take this to events um i don't know like wrestling tournaments uh, uh farmers markets um your mom's house i don't i don't know <laughs> you can move this around pretty easy so uh and again it pretty much can fit on a normal uh uh banquet table so that's that's great um that's cool this comes off in its own piece and this is again just almost uh a bunch of metal it almost is it is a bunch of metal um it's a frame i really don't know what i'm talking about is it obvious yeah in the belt uh the pieces are pretty light uh when you separate them now let's let's talk about some flaws so one of my complaints was these heat shields uh this top one not too bad gets held in place pretty good by uh the top unit but once you take this off there's nothing holding this uh heat shield in place and it easily and i say easily falls off um i don't know if we can see in here this is like we we have less than an eighth of an inch of overhang between like this black piece and this uh silver edge same with on this this well this side kind of slid over a little bit i'm making myself look like a fool what i'm trying to say is there's not much room from edge to edge and once you take the weight off of this thing this pan falls off easy so it is the bottom pan the bottom pan almost feels worse um it almost feels like an afterthought i literally would just make them a half of an inch to an inch wider and they would be much easier to deal with because when they fall off they fall off between these belts and then you got to try to finagle it to get it lined up and if you just say hecked with it and don't put the heat and pan it back on the right way you you mess up your table you melt your table <laughs> don't do that guys um i would say fix that riley that'd be a cool little quality of life change um widen widen those things i don't know uh there are already pre-drilled holes in there for some reason. Um, it looks like you could maybe put like a screw in there to keep it from sliding back and forth. Who knows? That's up to you guys. I don't work here. Um, other things that are super annoying is just like the general width of the opening here. I feel like it, they're kind of cheesing you into need, maybe needing to move up to the next model. I get it. That's what, you know, product lines are all about. But I wish they gave us maybe another two inches, 20 inch opening. That'd be cool. Especially on like the really big hoodies, like you get like your three Xers. Um, that's rough. Um, well, this is coming around here. So when you attach the belt, you're, you're going to feed these alligator teeth kind of together and then run this rod through. Um, that moves quite a bit. I recommend getting something hard, like, I don't know, like a ruler or something. And then you can use that to push back and forth so you don't puncture your finger. It hasn't moved on me in quite a while, but I also kind of bent the end of the rod. Uh, I wish maybe they gave you something to cap those with. That would be great because sometimes clothes do get stuck on them and then you're not paying attention and they get stuck in the opening over here somehow or like stuck on the bell or whatever and they, they burn alive and it's horrible and you, it's, it's sad really. Um, this lighting looks fantastic on me. Uh, what else can I say about this tabletop tiering unit? The green, you know, it's green. It's green, black. It's got this decal on it. That's pretty sick. This was annoying. Let's get, get to this. I don't know, whatever this cover is. Like, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't really get in the way. But you're creating unnecessary hangups here. Oh, I'm already remembering some things. Um, so, like, I mean, a shirt could get stuck on there. That, that's That's rough. That's unnecessary. This could get open, something could come and get in your gearbox down here. I mean, why is it 
only on one set of screws. Just put another one right here and then it doesn't move. Just please. Okay. Uh, yes. The last thing I was going to talk about. Can we see it? Can we see in here these corners? Um, so like I said, this is just metal and these are bent. These corners are the bane of all existence. I actually, it's barely noticeable probably, but I actually had to bend them with a pair of pliers because they would just catch every piece of fabric that was slightly wider than this belt would get stuck on that. And then it gets hung up. And then if it get caught really early, then it's wadded under there and it's getting burnt and you're burning shit again. Um, pardon my French. Uh, don't cancel me, please. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. See ya. Hey, I always seem to do this. Uh, I never showed you guys how to put the hoodie on. Uh, let's talk about, uh, the shirts again real fast. What was really funny is I started printing again and I never turned the, the heater back on after I turned it off in the video. And then I just ran three shirts through there and they all fell on each other wet. But it looks good because the black ink, let's go back to that first video. That black ink is great. Dries kind of fast. You don't need to put a whole lot on. So, uh, it actually doesn't make a huge mess if the wet shirt folded on itself. Looks good. Uh, let's, let's remember what we're doing here, folks. Let's put the t-shirt back on the press here. Let's start with the shirt. Again, to put your shirts ah, on this uh, 18 inch wide opening belt. It's actually kind of like a 16 inch belt, maybe 15 uh, with an 18 inch opening. So kind of, yeah, anyways. Let's do this. Is this God? Dang it, people! I. <laughs> this is a this is a TV show. Um, <laughs> I turned the, the belt was running. I was like, I never turned the heater on, so I turned the belt off and then didn't turn the heater on. So neither of them were on. I did have to turn both of them on. This is good. Let's run it anyways. Um, to put the shirts in again teaser video we're gonna fold the sleeves in just like that makes it a lot thinner um really uh you're not gonna be even printing anything wider than that so this is a great technique for whatever you're doing and you run it through vertically just like that uh i should do a video on uh the actual whatever this guy's called 150 250 whatever it's the four color one platen um I bought the package when I first started. I do recommend it, but there's some things I would change about that package. Um, and we'll maybe look at that. So I'm gonna yank this guy out because it's not even warm enough to do this yet. Let's show you guys the, the hoodie. Uh, what size am I working with right here? Medium. So this is gonna be super easy. Um, I should have grabbed like a an extra large or a 2X. You shove a 2X through this bad boy, you see what happens. Um, okay, so to do the hoodies, real easy. Um, you're gonna be pulling them off the platen, right? Again, I'm holding them so the front is the front would be facing me. All right, the print. Um, make sure your hood is flopped back. You want your hood back, okay? And then we're gonna bring the arms in again. So the arms and the hood are on the same side of the shirt, and you're just gonna lay it down on the platen just like that. All right, you want to make sure the hoodie hood is down, all right? And I'll tell you why. This, again, this is gonna feed in really easy because it's the medium. Throw a, a big boy hoodie on there and we're, we're gonna start running into problems, all right? And with this technique, it's definitely gonna condense down the shirt as much as you can. Um, like I said earlier in the video, narrow opening, stuff gets caught in there. You want everything that's gonna get snagged, like sleeves, hoodie, strings, everything tucked in. So that technique's gonna do it for you. Um, No, guys, what was I gonna say? Oh, what happens if we don't put the hood in? Um, it's bad news, you burn your hoodies. Problem with the hoods is they got a lot of structure to them every time you throw them down. There's like, you know, you try to flatten and everything like that, and it wants to stick up like this. If this drags across your heating element, it's done, it's instantly burnt, it's incinerated. You got the coolest looking burnt hoodie. You can tell people you ran to a building and saved someone's cat or something like that, but you didn't. You just, you can't fold your hoodie. You didn't put it on the right of the tabletop. Is this video over yet? I don't know. Bye.
Another pro tip for the people who watch the end credits, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm rerunning these guys that never got cured the first time. Um, if you're quick enough, you know, I don't know. This isn't really a tip. It's just, I just can't stop talking. I want to keep talking to people. But you can daisy chain them, all right? The friction problem with your belt is no more if you can just uh, daisy chain your shirt. So if they're overlapping like this, pretty much only works for t-shirts. You're not going to get hoodies to overlap and go through this thing. Again, because they they didn't bother to make this opening one inch taller. That could be a, a give it to me, boys. Just make it a little bit taller for those bigger hoodies, please. Um, and this would be great. I'd recommend this you know, day after day for everybody. All right, I don't even know why you'd buy anything else. Just buy this, buy 10 of them. Make it taller, please. Give me more control on the knobs.